Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, what an incredible screening joy. I I had seen some of the work before, but not for a long time. And I was really grateful for their resurrection or their being brought back into my um, memory banks. Um, and of course, we want you to talk all about your program forever and your process, of course, of looking through the collection to find the work, um, how you made your choices, all of those things. But, um, you know, I, have a, I, I would love to ask you a bunch of questions, but I also um, want to give you a chance to just talk a little bit more about um, your thesis for the, for the program, but also maybe some of the things that led you to the works that you discovered and how, um, how you navigated such a large collection, but also just like, you know, how you kept the rigor of your proposition um, while looking at work and, and, the, and maybe a bit more about the works that you chose. Yeah, I'd love to talk a bit about that and then um, talk to the artists who are here, Shockley and Yudi about their works, um, which I also wanna hear about. Um, but yeah, to start off, I think I was really informed by the works and thinking about the thesis and you can read uh, more specifically about that in the publication that's online. So I don't wanna go too much into that, but I mean, heaven to me has always been so subjective and I think it's because of my own positioning. Like I didn't grow up in any spiritual cosmologies. I grew up in kind of an isolated um, settler immigrant home life. It makes it easy to just kind of pick things from places that make sense to me rather have, than have an overarching idea um, of cosmology or things that make sense. So I think, I mean, if I can think of the title spirit feeding, I kind of relate it to Yao Ching's work that begins the piece, but then expands into the other works. Um, uh, I mean, I guess when you mentioned a piece that's been brought back, Yao Ching's from 1999, it's really stayed with me. I first saw it when I was like eight years ago when I worked at V-Tape as the summer student and it stayed with me since then. Um, and the ghost in that is a riff on the Buddhist concept of hungry ghost, which are these kind of insatiable beings that can't fully pass into the afterlife. Um, so thinking about that, how that might relate to heaven and crossing into worlds. Um, but yeah, riffing on the idea of to get from one world to another, I think there's this common thread of boundary crossings um, and contrasts in the other works too, like like Safdie Komalang's, the contrast between the vertical footage of uh, Filipino migrant workers that they recorded themselves versus this drone footage of these sleek buildings. Um, thinking of Gies, where it's contrasting these more hopeful sayings in text of yes, another world is possible with these nightmares of, of fears and children crying. Um, to Yudi's, um, in your piece, this contrast of heavy lifting with uh, audio from the Apollo 1969 moon landing that might represent a different ideology and Shockley's, which always makes me happy to view. Um, it's just this really emphatic, um, irreverent force, I think, about exploding what we know about forms of this expression maybe in laws of physical matter. Um, so I guess to Yudi and Shockley who are here, could you speak more to boundary crossings and contrasts in your work uh, and the origins of your thinking about the piece itself? Should I begin? Yeah, mm -hmm. go for um, it. Boundary crossing and contrast. Um, so in my um, short video, um, I've used uh, text and imagery. So um, with the intention to give a sensation of uh, traveling around the globe, but also across the cosmos. And I was also trying to suggest um, coexisting uh, physical realities. And um, the, the text that I, I narrate, uh, it's my voice, uh, is a manifesto 
inviting to look uh, outside of our usual frames of uh, reference. Um, so for example, when I uh, proclaim, uh, what do I say? I say, oh yeah, I, I scream, new materials in the reading of the world. Uh, and as for contrast, I think I'll speak about it a bit uh, later, uh, but, but quickly uh, on, on this point. Uh, yeah, I think in my video, I've, I've made an attempt to, to make, uh, to subvert a lot of things. So maybe this is where I use uh, contrast as a strategy uh, by putting together antagonist contrasted uh, element together that you would normally not, not normally associate uh, together. So th there, are, there are words that doesn't uh, necessarily would be associated with the images that I've put together uh, combined um, in the video. Yeah, I think parts of your video that stand out, like when you say things like, what if botany were explored for its sonic forms? And that's like something I've never thought about or putting these different contrasts together. It's like, why, why not? Um, and I think you do that in the form of the video itself. Yes, um, in, in my work in general, I try to, uh, I like to surprise people. Uh, so uh, for example, something that we might experience as fragile or as associate with uh, vulnerability. Um, I try to uh, empower them and elevate them. So yes, yeah, speak, speak about botany. Um, and it, it's also something I also do in my uh, visual work in general. Um, I have a background in uh, sculpture. So I've, I've made the same treatment with, uh, with, with paper. I was trying to, to show the strength and fragility of uh, certain materials like uh, paper. And also just being, the, just being me doing the proclaiming of me in my body and my, uh, my identity. I'm, I wouldn't be the person that uh, we see uh, on, on a stage, particularly in a sociopolitical uh, uh, context. So yeah, being me and using me uh, as somebody who uh, try, try to convince uh, the crowd uh, in some ways, uh, it's, um, it's a way to bring some contrast uh, against um, our usual assumptions. Yeah, I think that's true. There's something about your voice. It's so expressive in that it kind of cuts through maybe some of the source imagery where it's more from cultural sources or things we might recognize. And it reminds me of this contrast between your work and Unity's work where it's using audio clips from the moon landing. Unity, I'm wondering if you could talk more to that or like how you, that piece originated for you and your thinking around that. Yeah, sure. Um, well, first of all, it's great to see <clears throat> this tape, which I haven't seen yeah. I don't think for 15 years. <laughs> so it's, it's great to see it again uh, in, in a different, put into a different context. Um, I think at the time, um, if I remember correctly, I was uh, working on uh, mostly writing and, and I um, wanted to uh, sort of make a break from the work I've been doing before. So I was working on these six short videos and this is just one of, of the videos um i didn't distribute all of them but it was kind of like a working process uh that i that i um, imposed on myself so um i th think this particular one it was done at banff and it really started with those rocks that were sort of being um enveloped in that uh kind of slurry <laughs> And uh, it's that image of the rocks kind of sinking. And it started with that. And then I, and then I sort of added these other um, images that I, um, I guess, collected. Um, so rocks being carried, rocks being moved. And, um, uh, and then, of course, the, the astronaut uh, on the moon landing uh, felt like a bridge between um, the, the, the celestial movement of the planets and the sun and the physical nature of the of, of, of actual lifting a rock with your
your body. And I think at that time I was really working intuitively as well. You know, I, I wasn't really thinking about it in like a, uh, a larger context. I was really working, um, like I said, intuitively, like really uh, with the, with, with the materials. And, and I, I, I also think being in Newfoundland was, was also a big part of that. Um, I've been returning the summer to Newfoundland for the last probably 25 years now. And I think the, the, the nature of the landscape also made me sort of reflect on some of the, you know, some of the themes that I was trying to, to draw out. Yeah. yeah, I think it's um, like when you talk about working intuitively, I feel like as a viewer, I see the physical reality. Like, I don't know if it's you in the video doing the lifting. Yeah, Is me. that you? Yeah, okay. It's, me. it's, um, it's younger me. And, <laughs> and, and the rocks are a lot heavier than they used to be. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I feel that lifting. And then, but I feel like as a viewer, with it contrasted with the moon landing, it's this automatic kind of like, oh, this uh, repetitive cycle or perhaps futility, but along with effort and hope of keep moving these rocks under this pie or under this um, mini sun and moon. Um, and there's this, this phrase that stays with me from that video where it, the text says, day destroys night, destroys day. And it's very cyclical. Um, and when you talk about the weight of the sun and moon, I was wondering if the, the weight part of that was intuitively something physical to you or if there was more metaphorical aspect to that in terms of worship bodies or anything else i don't know i think it, it, in terms of the title um, if i could think back 20 years ago i think i was thinking more uh, weight as in the the, the 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 significance it has or you know on the eyes or any kind of labor, uh, the significance, but also just the the, the weight of, of, of rocks, of, of having to ponder the weight of, of the earth, of the sun. Um, yeah, I, I think that's what I was thinking about. UD? Yeah. UD, can you turn up your microphone? Because we cannot hear your beautiful voice and your incredible statements. And the world must hear you now. Is it? Uh, and you're very faint. Is it always been faint, or just just recently faint? <laughs> just since after the screening, it wasn't faint no. when in the, when we did the rehearsal. That's very weird. Mm -hmm. uh, I can still hear you, but it's just a tad faint. Yeah. And I don't know what's making it that way. Can you hear me better? Now? You sound like a uh, the man in the box. Oh, you know what happened. <laughs> uh, maybe you are a man in the box. Maybe we don't know, but maybe you are in the box. <laughs> Well, what happens um, is it switched. It switched to oh, you know. It's fixed. It's fixed. Yeah. It's fixed. You did it. There are that's, two that's so much better. Two headphones plugged into the computer, and that's what happened. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. Better. Good. Yep. Better. That made a big difference. Good. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess picking up some of the physical or geological aspects of your work, UD, and then tying it to your Shakli. Um, I was wondering about source materials. Like Shakli, you use a lot of images um, from science, nature, culture. I'm wondering what um, made you choose those images or what your thinking process was behind that. Um, for, for this uh, for this video, I was very interested in uh, choosing uh, materials, uh, text images, uh, and uh, footage. Uh, okay, let's 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 begin like this. Actually, let me think. Uh, well, the what 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 I had first was a text. So I departed from the text. Uh, so I, di I didn't have also 
I didn't collect uh, all the, the Im imagery yet. So uh, start, departing from the text, uh, this is when I started to, uh, uh, to set myself some parameters uh, as to which, uh, what kind of photographs, uh, images, and sound to find, uh, based on my desire to uh, give a science fiction, futuristic vibe with what I could do, with, with, um, with uh, no means, like no budget. Uh, I thought, how, how do I give this kind of, uh, um, this, this feeling of uh, being uh, teleported, uh, of time travel, uh, of being lifted away uh, from Earth uh, with, uh, with just things that I found without CGI. Um, so because, because of that, then I started to collect um, also, also images that I was interested in, all right? Uh, so, I was, so I scanned uh, Im images uh, from uh, astronomical books. Uh, so there's, there's some of that um, to, to refer to the, to the cosmos. Uh, and um, I, I've also used uh, some homemade footage uh, that I already had, uh, that I've always wanted to use. You know, when you, uh, you, you, you have some, some, some videos and some films you've uh, recorded, uh, but you still haven't found a use for it, but you really want to find the project for it. So that, that, was, uh, that was an opportunity to, to use some of this footage. Uh, and uh, some of the footage I had, uh, I felt back then that uh, might give a little bit of futuristic edge because they have uh, aspect of um, recent technology, uh, recent architecture. Uh, so, so for example, there are, there are footage of uh, uh, me strolling, strolling in, in Tokyo. Uh, I didn't want people to necessarily uh, get that it's Tokyo, but uh, maybe people did, it's okay. Um, of uh, like transport train uh, going across the skyline. Yeah. Uh, it's a footage and like big um, screenings. Um, and so some people might recognize quickly uh, Shibuya well, it's famous, but uh, that, that's all I could uh, use back then. Uh, that's what I had. Uh, and, uh, and then I was interested in, in uh, also images of places uh, that looked barren uh, as if it was the end of the world, apocalyptic. Uh, so I've had in my archive of homemade footage, uh, I had uh, Mini, mini DV tapes uh, uh, of uh, so, uh, scenery I've uh, I filmed uh, when, I was, uh, when I was in Iceland. I lived in Iceland as, as well at some point for a couple of years uh, before the making of this video. So I, I really had access to, to like apocalyptic uh, landscapes. So, um, so, so I've got the, some footage like this. And, and then there's, there's an opera singer at some point uh, that I've used at one point of the video uh, because it sounded epic and ground, uh, cli climaxing uh, and dramatic. Uh, literally, I've, I've asked him, I've asked him uh, we used to hang out together, uh, wherever I was in when I did my song. And I, I've asked him if I, if I could uh, get him to sing on a, a lava field for an up up upcoming video, which I, I didn't know what it would be yet. And uh, thanks to uh, da David Olafson, <laughs> so he did. And then uh, that was the opportunity to use, use this. Um, and and then, then I was trying to, to kind of uh, sub subvert uh, some, some known um, frames of references uh, in uh, like notions, uh, notions of mathematics, uh, ma mathematical conceptions uh, and physics. Uh, in fact, I, I, I was trying to celebrate, celebrate uh, those um, uh, conce this, um, conceptions, but at the same time subvert them. So I've, uh, I've tried to find uh, uh, relevant images uh, that relate to it, like uh, mathematical devices, uh, lab devices. Um, but it was also a way to, 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 to lead the viewer uh, into a, a comparison between order, huh? so the, rule, the ruler of the, uh, the, the, the measuring ruler, uh, uh, the apparatus, 
Uh, but then coinciding it very quickly with uh, collapse, huh? uh, the footage of collapse, uh, which I kind of stole. I stole some clips from uh, so, so, so some fun footage. And as for the as for the music, uh, just, for the same reason, I've collected certain uh, certain kind of uh, music, uh, a sound, very short clips, in fact. It's, it's, it's every time just to give a vibe, it's every time just a very short clip, as you have noticed, it's never like um, too, too long of uh, synthesizer, synthesizer bits uh, interspersed um, throughout the video. Um, I'm big into synthesizer, electronic uh, sound, uh, also analog sound. Um, I, 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 I found that some of these sounds have sounds are time, timeless to my ear at least uh, and and really i was um, i was working on the sound in a, in a, like cr it was crazy the way i worked on it like i was magnifying the timeline so i was i was doing some uh, some um, uh, match matching ma matching uh, bit matching uh, image and bit matching together but i was also trying to do some um, uh, dissociation like going against against matching things so in some moments, um, uh, so I, I wanted to really create a soundscape. Uh, the, the soundscape itself is really a, a, a work of art of its own. Actually, could could be people could listen to it without uh, the imagery. So. Um, yes, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really exciting to hear all your frames of references, um, and that's what makes the work like so joyous to view, I think, and picking up on some of what you said about barren landscapes, the kind of the apocalyptic feel. I feel like I connected that with your work, Yudi, uh, or maybe it's a Newfoundland landscape. I don't know. I've never actually been to the east coast of Canada. Um, but yeah, I'm just connecting those two in my head and wondering. Also, yeah, I think there's this connection of um, like Shockley, you're using these images of math or laws that we know that might have been instrumentalized for other purposes, or I'm thinking even of enlightenment ideals um, and just connecting that to maybe ideas of the moon landing and the ideologies behind that, um, where it was the space race between the, the West, the United States and the East or Russia at that time. Um, and everything that comes out in the Apollo moon landing versus you do like you lifting those heavy rocks. I'm wondering if you see any, if you have any thoughts on that, you do too. Um, specifically about the, the moon landing or? Yeah, I guess also um, about the moon landing, but also why you chose kind of those specific audio clips from the moon landing that you put right, right. in the work. Yeah, I, I think I like them because um, because of the banter between the, the the various actors in that I think there there may be two or three people that are communicating. And um, I also liked it because what they're doing are, are really simple things. But the fact that they're doing them um, in zero gravity uh, in these like crazy technological suits that are keeping them alive, I think I like that aspect of it. Contrasted to me um, with my rocks, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that was what was going through my mind at the time. Um, but yeah. I really wanted to create something kind of lyrical in a sense, you know, like these, these, by combining these various elements that somehow I would, you know, create some interesting um, um, relationships between the, the various elements. Um, yeah. Yeah. When you talk about that, it is a bit funny. Like, I think there's a slapstick angle to that work too like when you yeah. pick up the rocks and they keep rolling down mm -hmm. it's kind of futile but you keep mm -hmm. doing it um, yeah. but when you're talking about that in terms of oh yeah this banter between two people it's kind of normal talk but they're mm -hmm. on the moon <laughs> um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think there's like a, a kind of outrageous a, and ridiculous. And yeah, I think there is a kind of I don't know if it's Chaplin esque or Buster Keaton esque or something mm -hmm. with the way I'm carrying the rocks or moving them around and this. I guess it's kind of it's a little bit. Somebody also mentioned it's a bit like Sisyphus, which I hadn't really I wasn't really up on Greek <laughs> mythology at the time, but the the aspect of this perpetual rolling this rock up a hill and uh, you know am I am I getting Sisyphus wrong? <laughs> it's something no. like that. No, but, I think that's Sisyphus. you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I don't know much about Greek myth, but. I've heard of Sisyphus it's like this mm -hmm. perpetual rolling the rock up the hill and you can mm -hmm. take that in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. I mean I think it is this kind of like I see this kind of like just determined hope and just the act the physical act itself no matter if it leads to a certain place or not and that's what I see from that work enjoy mm -hmm. you know like getting back to the proposition of the program can you maybe just sort of think out loud for me anyway, just like how these two works kind of pushed and pulled the premise? Because in many ways, the two artists that we have with us tonight and their works in particular, I find very complimentary. Like they, they both do something that I find very fascinating. One could be inside the other, in fact. But I'm thinking from a curatorial perspective and how you discovered them and what made them close companions in the program, um, where they were placed in the program, and but also just that, you know, what was proposed to you as a curator, what made these fit so well? Yeah, I mean, um, think about these, like I, you know, at first, I thought of Yao Ching's work as an idea of heaven, because I had seen it before. Um, and then I, you know, B tape, gave us access to the preview site and must have watched hundreds of works. Um, so coming across Yudi's, I think, for me, there was that contrast between, I talk about it in the essay, but like earthly heavy lifting and then these people being on the moon, that was really compelling to me. And then Shockley's work, I had known um, outside of V-Tape through Sin Waikin um, zine, Sin Waikin zine on um, like, queer science fiction um, and different artists. So then I looked into Shockley, your work, and I saw new materials in the reading of the world. And I thought, yeah, both that it was super complimentary to the other works, but as a work on its own, it just made me feel invigorated. I'm like, oh, you're looking at these forms in different ways and putting together all these different collages and contrasts of what we know about the world. So, even when I asked about contrast in the beginning, I feel like that's what I was thinking about in these two works and in the other works of the artists that aren't here tonight, how they do a boundary crossing through desire, through wishes, through ghosts. Like in Yao Ching's work, um, the woman at the end, she says something like, there must be a reason for living hidden somewhere and she just eats the fortune. It's like physically ingesting that wish and that contrast. And of course, then the landlord comes, but then they've disappeared into their own reality. And it's also a queer reality in that specific one. Um, so I think it is about those boundary crossings. And yeah, UD and Shockley's, I feel, I mean, I didn't even, Deirdre, when you said that they kind of could fit one inside the other, I didn't even think of that. So that's just new, new ways of, that other people could see those works together. Um, but I was also wondering because throughout this whole program, I was forced to think about it, like what heavens means to me. I wonder if you, Dean Shockley, you could think about what sides of heaven um, mean to you, whether in current work, because I know some of this work is old, like UD, like it's, it must be weird seeing work from however many years ago and then kind of reinvigorating it. Um, but in your work now, are there sides of heaven or contrast that you see, or in this more expansive way, what is feeding your spirit right now? Um, Shockley, do you want it to go since I was- the last... I was gonna wait for you to go. <laughs> you want me you to go? To... 
Yes. <clears throat> you so, yes. Yeah, Outside of teaching on Zoom, okay. <laughs> um, could you repeat the question? Something was happening there. I was getting some broken up audio. I'm not sure what, what was going on. Oh uh, yeah, I was wondering because I was forced to think about like what does heaven mean to me? I was wondering what heaven means to you or what is uh, feeding your spirit these days or how you think of that idea of heavens. Hmm. Well, to be honest, I, I, I don't know that I think about things in those terms specifically. Um, and, um, you know, since, since that work, um, I guess a lot has happened since that. I mean, personally, I, I have, I have, uh, two teenage daughters and they're like, they just turned 18. And, um, so if I felt like, um, so much has happened, um, my own work has, has really slowed down, obviously, because because of the demands of being a parent and stuff. Um, but I'm just coming, I'm just coming out of that, those those like um, years of parenting. Like my kids are getting much more independent now and stuff. So it's 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 kind of interesting to 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 see those possibilities again of of, of maybe working a little bit more um, intensely. I've been working on this piece in Newfoundland again um, for the last uh, six years. And for some reason, I, you know, if I was really smart, I would have worked on little short pieces, kind of like the weight and the sun and the moon. But no, instead, I decided to do this long piece, which, of course, you know, just sort of took over. And, and of course, Newfoundland is very far away. So every time I want to do some more shooting, I have to figure out how to get there. And um, but uh, I think there maybe are some threads that, that run through the work uh, up till now. Um, certainly, I mean, the fact that I'm still obsessed with Newfoundland as a, as a, as a location. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, feel like, I feel like Montreal is my, my heaven on earth. <laughs> it, I mean, that's kind of why I, 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 I moved here. Um, and uh, I've been here since, God, it's been almost 30 years now. So, um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it has its own set of difficulties as well, but, but it certainly feels like home now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, just even finding somewhere where it's like a heaven on earth or pockets of heaven on earth, that's mm. pretty compelling. Mm. I tried to hang on to moments like that myself. Um, but yeah, yeah, like what you were saying about the length of time between now and then when the work was made, I think that's always an interesting thing that happens with um, like programs like this, where we get to look at Vitae's entire collection, there's things in there from even the 70s. So mm. who knows what will happen with those things. But there's always a possibility mm. of the, it kind of getting picked out again. I mean, I was really happy to find your work. Um, mm. I watched so much. Mm. Um, and well, it was interesting to, uh, to I, I mean, I had a very similar experience of putting together a body of work from V-Tape in the early 90s. And I was pulling out work from the 70s and uh, work by like Rodney Weirden. I don't know if you've heard of him, but, um, right. and I can't, and I, actually I think in that program, I, I, um, I did it with my partner Monique, but we, I think we also programmed uh, one of Yao Ching's works um, back in, in the early, early 90s there. So it's kind of interesting to, 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 to see. Uh, I haven't seen her work in a long time or even, I mean, she's, she, I think she even stayed at our place. So it was, uh, it's kind of interesting to, um, to, 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 to see these um, names again that I've, I've, I haven't heard in, in a while, you know, or seen the work of. So it's, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, I find that so cool that Yao Ching might have stayed at your place. Like, I, I don't know Yao Ching. I programmed her work, but 
that work has just stayed with me, even if it's from 1999. And I think some of her work, she's has done documentaries and things like that is so good, um, yeah. but I guess not talked about here anymore. Yeah. I think she's still doing things. I don't know though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She, well, one of the things, that, yeah, but I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but one of the things about the incubator that's so amazing is, is it scrubs across time. People get, you know, people that haven't necessarily been connected to VTape for a while can often be kind of reconnected through um, the incubator, like you, Yudi, you know, now we're kind of reintroduced to you after a long time away. But also, you know, with Shock Lee, I didn't know your work and I, I, I love it. I was very, uh, so I loved the, the intensity of it, the, the voice in it. I mean, there was something about it that I really was excited by and I didn't know your work before. And I think one of the things about the incubator through the, the curator and through your work, Joy, is that you, know, you, you dig around and you find these new connections that span the years that the collection has to offer. It dates back to the early 70s, um, but also brings in new artists into that dialogue and vocabulary. So I guess also Yudi and, and Shukli and maybe through what your uh, uh, curatorial investigation provides is, you know, how do these new works actually get, how do they, like, do they feel like companions now outside the collection? Um, you know, what do they have now in common through your work and how will that resonate for you in the long term, I think is a, is a, is an interesting question. And Shock Lee, do you, you know, did you know about VT before? How did you, what do you now know about it through this process? Um, I came across VT uh, some years ago, I think. I think somebody else has screened, uh, maybe this same video actually, I don't remember. But I, I think I was part of a, was it called The Other Side of the Mountain? Did you have a, did you have something called The Other Side of the Mountain? I'm going to be, or I've got it? Lisa Steele on a speed dial. I've got Lisa <laughs> on speed know. dial. I don't know if it no. was, uh, I don't know if it was the V-type. I think it was connected to V-type. Uh, so I, I came across it, uh, yeah, through that. And then I was, um, I, I, I haven't been uh, co connected with it uh, uh, since then. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's good to see uh, uh, yeah, your collection and what you what you do with it. Yeah. I have news in from Lisa that um, Yao Ching is actually making a feature in Hong Kong right now. So look Yay. forward to that. Yay. 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 So she's, cool. she's an amazing artist. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I did another work before and I was really impressed. Uh, it's it's such a good piece I think it stands the test of time and even with the jangling piano score which I love which I think really adds right. to the mood of it I guess um, mm -hmm. but yeah I love your workshop Lee since I saw it and you're coming to us from London UK right mm. and, and you're also DJ wondering if you could talk about current projects or things you're thinking of I know you had that one film on the offbeat that you also sent to me so you think about syncopation and things like that. But yeah, what, what is feeding your spirit right now? Or what are you working on right now? Um, at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm trying to focus on uh, working on my own uh, music. Uh, but to, to be honest, it's, I've, I, I found it really challenging to, to find time for it. Um, so we, we uh, yeah, through, through, I mean, through the, the, the pandemic, uh, yeah, so everything I've opened up here, uh, it's been difficult to be, it's been um, difficult to be cre creative and also I've been uh, having some uh, fi fi financial uh, hardship. So, I've, uh, so uh, um, a lot of my time is uh, also um, uh, invested in, uh, in teaching, which I, which I love doing. Um, and I, I've been doing a lot of DJ, DJ mixes for uh, radio shows. Uh, I, I've not had I, my, my, um, uh, my, my DJ practice uh, in a live situation has not picked up yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have, a, I have a gig in a club uh, early December. Uh, so I really look forward to it. 
Uh, so a lot of uh, yeah DJ mixes for radio shows. I have a I have a show with some friends on the uh, internet, pu uh, internet public radio uh, called Vitamins. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm chasing I'm chasing time to to work on my um, my my own personal uh, uh, music. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be releasing my first EP on the label uh, China Bot. I don't know if you've heard of them. It's uh, it's very incredible. Uh, it's a, it's just another source of uh, uh, if you're starved for for new sound, um, all sort of sounds. In fact, it's, you you couldn't pigeon the whole other uh, label, quirky sounds, electronic sound as well, cinematic sound, China Boat, uh, and. Um, Yes, well, my, my energy level is uh, changing all the time, uh, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've been uh, it's been changing for me too. I mean, even 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 my recent film, um, short film that I, I finished last spring, which I sent you uh, to to see, which was premiered in uh, London uh, in June, I think it was. Uh, very happy with it, but I was that was really hard uh, to make. So I would say. Uh, I'm, I'm coping. I'm coping with uh, yeah, uh, going through every day, um, teaching, trying to find time to, to to work on my own music. My first EP, which is gonna be uh, uh, a mix of different genres. In fact, maybe we won't be able to uh, label them. Um, it's, it's, it's part of it will be like very uh, dance floor focused. Uh, and there will be some more like, uh, uh, how do you say that in English? Uh, sensual, uh, so there will be some sort of sensual sound. Uh, sensual? So, so sensual, you know, like that, that gives you goosebumps, some, some <laughs> sounds that uh, you go, ah, <laughs> I really <laughs> some spoken words. I love, I, love, um, I love going back to emotion uh, and optimism in, in my work. Uh, so this is what I'm working on, um, um, mostly at the moment, uh, I would say. And for, for what lifts my spirits uh, are normally things that I have been more able to do before, um, before the pandemic. Normally, uh, when I could, I would go uh, and explore some uh, big landscapes. I'd save, I'd save a bit of money and I'd be like, I want to go there. <laughs> I want to go and check, uh, yeah, some geology, some funky, Landscapes of funky rock formations with different uh, colors due to uh, miner mineral deposits. Uh, I, I used to be big into uh, when I could have saved up money to go uh, scuba diving, like I can't wait for, for next time when, when I'd be able to go. Um, yeah, so, so in, meanwhile, I'm dreaming of doing this again, uh, dreaming of big landscape, working on music. Uh, is feeding my spirit, I would say. Yeah, I that sounds good. That sounds great. I want to see some funky landscapes. I haven't yeah. even been in my house. Um, mm -hmm. I immediately wrote down that label, China Bot. I'm gonna look look at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, uh, Yudi, did you have anything else you wanted to add, or Joy? Any other thoughts? I don't think so. I mean, that was my last thought to the group, but if anyone else had something, this has been I, lovely. I would, I would like to say, I would like to say something very quickly. Uh, yeah. I, I, I really uh, love, uh, I really love the uh, program you've put together, Chai. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I find it really striking. What's striking to me is uh, how, far, how far back in time you went. Uh, yeah. Uh, to speak about uh, something that is, um, I mean, very relevant to today uh, and thinking of the, of the future. Um, and and I, I, I think of, uh, there's, there's like a reality check uh, throughout many of the, the, the work you've shown. Um, so like some, uh, yeah. Uh, so for example, the immigrants in Hong Kong, I think it was, but, but uh, everybody in their own way, the filmmakers or the subjects of the filmmakers uh, attempting to, to, to make their own, uh, uh, own uh, pos positive uh, environment 
um, trying to kind of overcome uh, ch challenges through dreaming, through um, proposing uh, alternative uh, uh, alternative narratives. Uh, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for saying that, Shakwe. I think when I was picking up the programs, it never even occurred to me like the time span that they would span, I guess, you know, 20 plus years but how they all seem like companion pieces, at least to me, like Deirdre, you said. Um, but yeah, I think it's true that there's some kind of, like you do in your work, Shockley, this inverting of norms and all the pieces. Um, like in Stephanie Comelangs, who's not here, but uh, that work itself, she calls the science fiction documentary. So I think the way she uses the drones, like, it can have the vertical cell phone personal imagery from the Filipino migrant workers itself among the like the city and everything else. But this drone has a voice too. But that voice is just this collective consciousness of all the women themselves. Um, I think I find that striking. It's definitely like an inversion of, you know, imaging people not only by economic hierarchy or the exploitation of maybe their work, but another way of imaging to see it differently and on their own terms. Yeah, that was a, that was a, a very engaging piece. I'd never seen that before. Well, I haven't seen, I've seen Yao Ching's piece, but I haven't seen any of the other works before. So this has been a great, uh, a great opportunity to, mm -hmm. and to meet you all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, perhaps on that, um, that note, we should release each other from these squares. <laughs> um, and I really honestly, honest to, I just really love this curatorial incubator. I thought it was really um, important and uh, it, the incubator brings together a lot of emerging curators, um, but of course, uh, having had some connection with you, Joy, uh, over the last few years. I was really excited to see your um, curatorial work here. It was exceptional. The writing is amazing. And your capacity to bring these works from different times forward on this prospect of uh, heaven and uh, how it incorporates, I think, a lot of what's now um, really important ways of seeing. Uh, I thought it was really exceptional. So I want to thank you um, from all of us at VTape. There's lots of us at VTape and um, we all thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. And Yudi and Shockley, it was such a pleasure to re-meet you. Yudi, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. I feel like we both uh, share a, a, a time in the 90s that um, maybe we should re revisit some time together. Um, and Chuck Lee, what a pleasure to meet you and be introduced to your work. It was really fantastic. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Kira Bolt and Dustin Lawrence for supporting the, the back and front end running this whole show for us. And of course, Lisa Steele, who has um, been fiercely and tirelessly running the curatorial incubator for many, many years. And as this is the 17th, um, that's a wow. pretty exceptional thing. So I invite you guys also to look at the history of the curatorial incubators to kind of situate yourselves in this in this legacy of of inviting emerging curators and then Joy, of course, um, being one of the most amazing people in the whole wide world. Thank you again <laughs> for so your work. Sweet. Uh, thank you, thank you, Deirdre. Thank you, everyone at VTAVE, Shockley yeah. and Yudi. Hey, it's good to meet um, you all. This is yeah. a pleasure. Look me up if you come to Montreal. Yeah. Oh, we're we're all coming. Oh, yeah. We're all coming. I would like booking to, a shuttle. Oh, yeah. Should I should yeah. I knock at your door if I come? Or something? Yes, I've come here. Yes. <laughs> Respect my visit. I want to see some grand landscape. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's great here. <laughs> in Canada. There's so many landscapes in Canada. Yeah. Yes. If you like landscapes, you have to go to Newfoundland. Yes. Yeah. A yeah. rock. Noted. A rock. Yeah, it's a rock in and of itself. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Okay, so we'll see you both very soon. And okay. um, thanks again, everybody. Have a great Bye -bye. night. Bye. Thanks again. Bye. 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 See you soon. Bye.